So it's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, we just want to ask you a couple of questions today about your running career. Uh, what first inspired you to start running? Um, I think it was more just kind of a, a gentle discovery of running and mm -hmm. the fact that I enjoyed running uh, that kind of started me into just running every day and then it becoming a career mm -hmm. was a uh, a, a development from that and a very very gradual process to, so to begin with I just enjoyed the way that running made me feel I um, made a lot of friends that way as well mm -hmm. and I found that it kind of helped me to do better in school because if I could concentrate okay. a little bit better I could sort things out in my head while, while I was running and I wanted to see how, how good I, I could be and how yeah. fast I could <laughs> run um, and I basically never planned to, to make a career but mm -hmm. just wanted to give myself the chance to be able to to make a career out of it and I was very lucky that mm -hmm. in the end I could make a career out of my hobby. <laughs> cool, so you'd say that running impacted your social life positively? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I was really very shy in school and then through sport yeah. I became more able to, to speak up for myself, to stand up for myself, to stand mm -hmm. up for, for what I, I believed in um, mm -hmm. and I think that it helped to, to kind of grow that side of my personality. So I'm aware that you've supported anti-doping organisations and stuff, where would you say that comes from? I think that my insistence if you like, <laughs> I was trying to look for the right word to, to speak up for things mm -hmm. that I believe. I think a lot comes from the way that I was brought up and, and in particular my grandma who really taught us to, to have a lot of respect for other people but to stand up for what you believe in even mm -hmm. if it, it might not make you popular um, and you're not doing it to, to be liked, you're yeah. doing it to feel good about yourself and mm -hmm. to look yourself in the eye afterwards and to, to try and, and do the right thing. So. Yeah, at the time sometimes it can be scary, particularly I think the first time that you really speak out about something. Yeah. Um, but there is a certain strength that, that comes from that and a certain honesty that I think helps you to, to do well. So I, I've always felt that if you see something and you don't think it's right, then you should say something about it. Otherwise, you don't really have a right to complain about it. Um, very because true. you haven't done anything to try and change it. Mm -hmm. I know that you suffer from asthma and could you tell us what it was like to manage that throughout your running career? I think I was very lucky. I was diagnosed uh, with exercise induced asthma when I was 14 mm -hmm. uh, and we'd moved within the UK from Cheshire down to yeah. Bedfordshire mm -hmm. and in Bedfordshire there's a lot of oilseed rape which is one of my oh, triggers. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that kind of sparked it. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually passing out after training oh, sessions. No. <laughs> um, so when I went to see my GP I was really worried that he was going to say you have something wrong with you and you can't run anymore uh, and he was actually way ahead of his time when you consider mm -hmm. that this was kind of the 80s um, and he just said no you have exercise induced asthma you're going to have to take inhalers mm -hmm. but it's not going to stop you doing your sport you're just going to have to learn to, to control it and to live with it and I think that was a great thing to say to a 14 year old girl who was really scared I wasn't going to be yeah. able to, to carry on so because I've grown up with it I guess I don't really think of it yeah. as a particularly big deal now because um, it was never made into that and I was able to, to learn to manage it so little things like traveling with a peak flow monitor mm -hmm. um, and learning which things spark uh, and set off my asthma so for me it's dust mites, it's mm -hmm. certain pollens, extremes of temperature and pollution um, and that's another reason why now I kind of do what I can for to advocate for clean air. I'm a UN yeah. ambassador for clean air because I, I see how important it is mm -hmm. and I want my children to, to, to grow up with, with that yeah. air that they can breathe. Mm -hmm. And so how would you advise other people who also suffer from the same condition? The same thing that you did? Yes, um, the best advice that I, that I give to children is yeah, don't be afraid of it, learn to control mm -hmm. it. So learn to control your asthma, don't let it control your life. Yeah. Um, because you can work with it, you're just going to have to make certain modifications. For, you can do that um, and yeah, it's, it's about working with that and still, you can still do everything that you want to do and in fact, sport is a great balancer 
for kids that suffer from asthma because the stronger you can make your lungs, the better they're able to cope with mm -hmm. an asthma attack when it happens. That's amazing. And so how did having children and a family affect your sports career? Again, I think I was, I was very lucky. I never, in my mind, I never thought that the two couldn't work together. Mm -hmm. And I had role models that had gone before me. People like Ingrid Christensen, who had held the world record yeah. for the marathon. She was a, a mom and, and came back to racing. Sonia O'Sullivan, mm -hmm. Liz McColgan. Um, so I never thought there should be a reason why I couldn't. I just understood that I needed to have that support yeah. uh, of my close family and extended family to be able to, to make it work. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so when you became the fastest female marathon runner of all time, did you ever expect that you would hold on to that title for the next 16 years? No, uh, <laughs> not at all. Um, I think I thought at the time, I, I genuinely thought I was going to be able to run faster mm -hmm. um, and, and beat it again. Um, but I didn't imagine that it would stand for, for as long as it, as it did mm -hmm. do. Uh, I do remember when I was setting it, absolutely thinking, okay, I need to get every last drop of energy that I yeah. can from yeah. myself because I want this to, to stand for uh, as long as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and the marathon as well, it, it, you can only really run a maximum of three a year, usually two yeah. a year. So when it goes right and you get everything come together on the day, so you've trained well, you're in good shape, mm -hmm. you're feeling good, you've got good conditions and it's a fast course, you kind of want to capitalise on that yeah. and get everything out of it that you can. It's not like you can come back next week and have another go. Yeah. And when you were training for the marathons, how frequently did you train and for how long? So I used to, to train um, twice a day most days. I trained on an eight day cycle, so it was seven days of training and then the eighth day was a rest day. Okay. And then it would kind of rotate around again. Mm -hmm. um, and of that, five days of the seven were double days. Um, wow. <laughs> sort of a workout and then yeah. an easy run um, and two days were some a long run which was mm -hmm. two and a half hours, two, two minutes, two hours, fifteen um, and a recovery day of 90 minutes. Would you ever get bored running for that long? Um, yes, <laughs> sometimes um, yeah. but I think you use it as a training for the mind mm. for in the, within the mm. race so Yes, training is harder sometimes and certainly there are more mental concentration lapses yeah. and boring times in training than there'll mm -hmm. ever be in the race because in the race you've got everything happening around you, you've got the yeah. motivation of the race, you've got the atmosphere of the, of the crowds as well. Mm -hmm. So all of that helps to, to make the race much easier. But I really think that training is, is a great place to hone those concentration skills to, yeah. to keep focused for the entire duration. And what are the most harsh conditions you've had to endure while training? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I guess tra in training both extremes, so driving rain in your face is, yeah. is not very nice, um, particularly when it's really cold mm -hmm. uh, as well. Um, sandstorms, so we would spend some time training in um, New Mexico, in Albuquerque, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's kind of in the middle of the desert, but if it would get really windy, then that would whip up a, a yeah. lot of sand in the air, and that's challenging. Um, and then I guess competition, the heat and humidity is, uh, is a pretty tough one to, mm -hmm. to race in. What diet would you recommend for track and field athletes? Would you say that vegetarianism is a good option or veganism? Um, so I'm a, a great believer in everything in moderation mm -hmm. um, uh, and balance. I used to, there wasn't really anything that I didn't eat late on. In my career I found out that I was intolerant to, to dairy, mm -hmm. so I tried to kind of reduce that. Um, but yes, I used to, to balance things out, I used to find that to, when you're breaking down muscle in training, the quickest and easiest way to get it back in is actually to eat meat. But that's mm -hmm. not to say that you can't be a vegan or a vegetarian and compete at the top level you can, but you just have to pay a lot more attention to making sure that you get the protein yeah. and enough protein right. into yeah. your body. So yeah, I think everything in moderation, definitely not obsessing about things too much. And the biggest thing, just making sure that you fuel your body mm -hmm. well enough. Uh, and respect, we, used to, we always talk about a 20 minute window. Mm -hmm. And when you finish training, to that there's a 20 minute window to yeah. refuel the muscles to enable okay. optimum recovery. So if you can get something, be it just a banana or an energy drink or yeah. just something into you within that 20 minutes and then follow up as soon as possible with a, a good balanced meal, that's the best way to recover. Okay, good. And you've had an amazing career. Could you tell us what your aspirations are for the future? Um, 
I have, a, a, I guess, a lot of goals um, mm-hmm. for for the future. I always used to set goals when I when I was training uh, and yeah. competing, and I kind of still do that in my head now. Mm-hmm. It's just that they're very, very different. And being a mum now, some of them actually involve yeah. the kids and doing what I can to support them and help them to to set their goals and kind of negotiate mm-hmm. life. And I think particularly now for. I have a, a just starting teenager, so she's 13, oh, yeah. and oh. kind of wow. helping her negotiate hormones yeah. and social media and mm-hmm. things like that is, is very different to when when I was younger. Yeah, um, and then I also have goals to try and kind of encourage as many people to be physically active uh, as possible. I worked with the World Health Organization on mm-hmm. a commission ending childhood obesity. And I'm just passionate about introducing the joys yeah. of running to as many people as possible. And so I'm trying to kind of bring those together mm-hmm. as well. Um, and yeah, cleaning up sport, uh, as we yeah. talked about the anti-doping side of it. I'm quite passionate about doing what I can to help my sport mm-hmm. be the best that it can and to protect the clean athletes within there because I do believe it's a great sport. Wow. And so finally, what advice would you give to young want to be track and field athletes? Or really any athletes? Um, I think the biggest thing is, it's to anyone, is really think about the goals that you want to achieve and setting mm-hmm. those goals and aim high um, because you might not achieve them, but in trying to achieve those dream goals, you'll achieve much more and you'll find out a lot more about yourself uh, along the way. So they're the biggest things are just to give it 100% every day, mm-hmm. um, play by the rules and respect the rules and respect the other yeah. people and respect yourself. Be, be fair and honest with, you, with yourself, put everything in and you can't, there's no such thing as fairly then you can't ask any more of yourself than yeah. to just tr- give it your best shot. Thank you very much. It's been Thank very important. <laughs>